Our next speaker, and I need to apologize, this morning when I was going through the agenda, it's easy to slip up with a few things, and I mentioned this person was from India, he's not from India, he's from Sri Lanka. And it's a bit like this morning's conversation I was having with Nico in the car, and I said, what's it like in uh, Sweden these days? And he looked at me and he said, Finland, I'm Finnish. I said, oh, I said, sorry about that. He goes, yeah, you're Irish, aren't you? But he said it with such a straight look. I looked at him and I said, no, I'm not Irish. He said, there, exactly. <laughs> so I've insulted two people this morning already. I apologize. And let's see how the rest of the day goes. <laughs> okay, Gearing Up for Excellence uh, is going to be presented by Ranjan De Silva. He's got an extensive background and uh, lots of experience with NLP. How many of you have not heard of NLP? Show of hands. About 50% of the room, wow. Neuro-linguistic programming sounds very technical to me, but he's gonna let us know what that really means and more importantly, how we can use it in all as aspects of our life. A little bit more about him, he has a, he's a PGDIP, sounds very uh, clever, in marketing from the Chartered Institute of Marketing UK and an MBA from the Postgraduate Institute of Management in Sri Lanka. He's an accredited trainer in delivering the personal transformational program, Mastery of Self through Neuro Linguistic Programming and its derivatives. He's an author of Mind Programming for Sales Success and a Better Way to Sell, and his practical experience runs through two decades. He has a rich corporate experience, has been a trainer consultant to many big corporates around the world. He's going to try to simplify a lot of his teachings so it can add value to every single person in the room. Can you please welcome to the stage, Ranjan De Silva. I would need a hundred days of training to teach you about what I know about NLP, but I have 30, 30 minutes to do so. And as I was thinking, how do I summarize this? Mark Twain came to my mind who said, I wrote a long letter because I did not have the time to write a short one. <laughs> because to do a short one, it takes so much more time. How many of you here are NLP practitioners? Can I have a show of hands, please? Okay, master practitioners. Okay, great. Uh, it's nice to see some of you here. I'm sure you could contribute as you go on. I'm not going to make it technical. In fact, my task is to make it as simple as possible. In terms of simplicity, let me tell you, if you take, say, a television set when you buy one, do you go out and open up the thing and look inside to see, is the system working right? Is the wiring correct? Are the transmitters fitted in the correct place? No, you don't do that. You will just switch on and switch off. So I'm going to go to the switch on and switch off mode where I'll teach you some of the tools and you check and see, okay, does it work? Does it not work? If it works for you, yes, take it. If it doesn't work, just put it aside. And I have a few slides to support me in this presentation. And the first one is about unlimited potential in our DNA. I mean, we've got unlimited potential, and I, I don't think we need to talk about it. Bob's talked about it a lot. Um, I mean, you look around the world. I, if, if you were in a YouTube fan recently, I'm sure you would have noticed or seen the singing sensation Susan Boyle, who came up from nowhere, and, and that was so much potential hidden within her. And you talk about musicians. Last night we were in, uh, uh, at the show uh, by the two Pakistani singers, um, and that was amazing at the Palladium in the media city, and the amount of talent and the passion uh, which comes through them. You look at sports people. I mean, those people who, you know, achieved the Olympics, um, you know, 100-meter gold medal, or take the musicians like Pavarotti or some teachers. Have you ever been to a class and where you really loved that teacher? You just wanted to keep going back to this teacher. Have you ever seen these teachers? And I'm sure you would have noticed that when, I, when you keep going back to those teachers, you would get some of the best results possible. Now, I don't have to talk too much about unlimited potential. It is in our DNA. I come from a country which is known for the three T's. The first one is T, Ceylon T. The second one is tourism. And more recently, terrorism. <laughs> Hopefully, the final one is out of the way. 
And talking about tourism, I mean, elephants are something about Sri Lanka. In fact, Gautam was talking to me. He had been there last week. He's gone to Pinnavara, the elephant orphanage. Let me tell something which we may not realize. The baby elephant is tied with a chain. And this elephant cannot break the chain because physically it is weak. But something that we don't realize is that even when the elephant is fully grown, it is still tied with the same chain. Scientifically, it is well proven that this chain can be easily broken. Because elephants do, you know, topple those trees and pull the rocks around. But it does not break that tiny little chain. May I know from someone in the audience, why do you think it cannot break that chain? It's condition, it's program. So the DNA was such that you got so much of energy and potential, but because of our conditioning, because of our programming, we are not able to break that chain. It only will take a disaster, maybe a fire which takes off, and suddenly the elephant gets excited and starts struggling, pulls the leg, and by accident it learns that this chain can be broken. And ladies and gentlemen, don't we sometimes need that fire under us to break that chain, those chains that hold us back. So let's see how NLP, or Neuro Linguistic Programming, can help us in breaking this chain. What is NLP? Any, any guesses? Neuro? Nervous system? Linguistics? Is language? Programming? It's like programming a computer. So neuro-linguistic programming is the language or the software for programming our brain. NLP was uh, discovered about 40 years ago by two scientists by the names of Richard Bandler and John Grinder. Richard Bandler was a gestalt psychologist. John Grinder was a software programmer. The two of them were working on their PhD. Don't get too excited about the PhD because the PhD stands for partial head damage. <laughs> Once when I told this in an audience, you know, there was one participant who looked highly excited and I asked, what's, what's, what's the problem? And he said, um, you know, I got a boss who is a PhD and uh, you're slightly wrong. And I thought maybe I offended him. And I asked, what do you mean? He said, he's permanently head damaged. <laughs> Anyway, these two gentlemen were working on the PhD, and the PhD was about finding out the reason for excellence. In order to find out the reason for excellence, they modeled top performers, like teachers, clergy, psychotherapists, sportsmen, and they looked at their behaviors, they looked at their thinking patterns, and this entire study gave way to the science of NLP. However, since it is still very new, it has not been completely um, accredited or um, recognized. There's still a lot of controversy behind NLP. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll teach you some of the tools which, if you, if you think you can make use of, you can work on it. Now, what does NLP do? One area, I, we, we heard about it earlier, about visualization. NLP helps people to visualize success. NLP helps people um, to channel their lives in the manner and the way they want it to go. So let me teach you of some few simple tools which uh, hopefully would be useful as you go on. The first one is called the, the mental habits for success. It comes from the foundations of NLP. And the first habit out of the three is act the way you want to feel. Generally, People act the way they feel. Okay? If someone feels angry, they would act angry. You feel sad, you start crying. You feel happy, you start laughing. So, when I say generally, this is, like about, this is about 95% of the people would act the way they feel. Agreed? Okay. Now, NLP discovered that people who are most successful and who have achieved a higher level of success did it the other way around. They acted the way they wanted to feel rather than acting the way they felt. And let me just give you a little example 
a little demonstration which can show you how it works. So may I ask all of you for a moment of, in time just to move forward in your chair, change your physiology and move forward sit and, and lean forward and bring your hand up to your head and just rub your forehead while biting your lips and tensing your face. And as you do that, I want you to feel what you feel right now. Okay, that's fine. You can go back to your original position before you uh, have different reactions. Uh, may I ask you, what did you feel as you did it? Tensed? Stressed? Sorry? Grumpy, yeah, grumpy. What else? Relaxed as well, great. And that's good, that's very important. Some would say, no, this should make you feel depressed. Not really. For some people, that's relaxed. Some people felt funny doing that. Okay. Uh, there's, uh, there, and that, that's what it is, because each and every one of you is unique. NLP is not about telling, okay, this is what you should do to feel good. No. It is about what do you feel when you do certain things. In fact, if you study some of the uh, the creative artist, for example, Walt Disney, if you just study his modes uh, and physiology, when he wanted to be creative, you he would, he would, he would see himself looking upright and having his hand in a particular way. And he, he, people always catch him doing that. And later on, other artists who wanted to be creators started doing that and felt that that activates something within you which makes you feel more creative. So acting the way you want to feel is about changing your physiology to a mode which will create an, an impact that you want created. Let me take a different physiology. You did this a little while ago. Let's some, do something different. Please bring your hands out like this, please. And uh, look at everyone in the room. Smile at everyone. And give everyone a flying kiss. <laughs> now, how do you feel doing that? Felt better, felt grumpy as well, okay. <laughs> okay. So what happened here is within 10 seconds you went from sad to happy and to do that you only had to change your physiology. Okay. So that shows that if you want to feel confident, if you want to feel successful, it's about bringing your shoulders back, head up and walking like a winner, not like a whiner. Okay. Not like walking like that. How are you? Not bad. Okay. Now, it's about deciding and choosing. Again, as, as some of you have quite rightly said, it, the mode and the physiology will depend on yourself. So the first simple tool from NLP is that you can choose your emotions. You don't have to tell, okay, I got upset because someone else said this to me. Uh, or I, I felt terrible because the, you know, the recession is on. Or I felt terrible because the traffic is bad. It's about choosing your emotion, and one way you do it is by choosing your physiology. Okay? The second one is called the pink elephant. Now, if I tell you right now, think of anything, but please don't think of a pink elephant. <laughs> think of anything in this world, but please don't think of a pink elephant. That's the only thing I request you to do. Don't think of a pink elephant. Think of anything else. What do you think about? Of course, a pink elephant. <laughs> because the brain does not understand the word don't. So if I say don't think of the color blue, that's exactly what he'll notice. And similarly, if I say don't come late, and that might be the day that you might forget something, have to go back to get it, and then you get late. Because you keep putting pressure on yourself by using the word don't. Okay? So therefore, one of the tools in NLP is how do we change our language we speak to ourselves and others so that we drop the word don't out of our vocabulary? So instead of saying don't get late, what would I say? Come early. Don't forget to bring that book. Remember to bring the book. Don't make that customer angry. Keep the customer happy. And sometimes unknowingly, we keep using the word don't over and over again. And what, what it does to our brain is it creates dendroids. You know about the, the neural pathways which connects the brain cells. Just imagine a, a lawn, a piece of grass. And 
you walk from one corner to the other every day. Day one, when you walk from one corner to the other on the grass, do you keep a footprint on it? No. Day two, maybe you're starting to do it. And if you keep doing that every day, for 21 days, you will have a pathway created on that lawn. And on the 22nd day, which path might you take? You might go on the same path. So when you keep using the word don't and don't and don't all the time, we create that pathway and then we keep walking on it all the time. But this, this also says the good news is that if you keep dropping the don't of your vocabulary and keep using the more positive words, you will create new pathways and new dendrites. And generally it is known that if you do something for 21 days non-stop, you create a new habit. So creating that DNA, unleashing the DNA, creating those positive habits takes 21 days of doing it and that's so important. The third one is questions are the answers. You ask yourself the wrong questions. If you go and ask yourself, why am I not successful? And you'll get all loads of answers. Oh, because I was, you know, had a poor education, I had bad parenting, and I had terrible friends. You have loads of things which you might hear which may not necessarily help you to become successful. So instead of asking yourself, why am I not successful, what do you think would be a better question to ask yourself? How can I be more successful? What do I do? What, what steps do I take in order to be more successful? So the third one, which is so important, is asking yourself the right questions. Let me share with you a story which brings this thing uh, out uh, very loudly. Suchiro Honda uh, was, when he was a teenager, this is the creator of the Honda Motor Corporation. When Honda was a teenager, was a young man, he was working for Toyota. Now this young man had a big dream and his dream was to build his own car one day. And he had the right answers, questions all the time. He asked himself, do I want to build my own car? What was the answer? Yes. He didn't say yes. He said yes. Do I want to build my own car? Yes. yes. Can I build my own car? Yes. yes. And the more he asked that question, the more empowered he became and the more passionate he became about building his own car. And one of his friends said, didn't you hear that there is a program at Toyota that if you develop your own prototype, they would build it for you, put your name on it, and share some of the profits? He said, really? I didn't know that. He checked it out with, from the manager at Toyota who confirmed it, and thereafter he went about making his car. As he was going on, he asked himself the question, how do I get the money to build the car? Now, he didn't have the money to do it. But he realized that his biggest expenditure was on his house rent. He decides to give up his house, sleep on a workbench at Toyota, and he did, it, did this for two years as he built his prototype. After two years, when he showed it to the manager, it was completely rejected. He was said, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong. And he said, thank you very much, because he realized that feedback is the breakfast of champions. He took the feedback, he said, I'll do this and I'll come up with a better model. Two more years on the workbench, comes up with a better model, shows this to the manager at Toyota. He said, young man, I got good news and bad news for, good news and bad news for you. The good news is the model is perfect. This is something we would be proud making for you. But the bad news is World War II just started. And we don't know, we have stopped all new models and we don't know when the war will finish and when we can start doing this. But he did not give up. He continuously asked himself the question, do I want to build my own car? What's the answer? Yes. Can I build my own car? Yes. And the more he asked that, the more empowered he became. And one of his friends told him, look here Honda, now you got a model which Toyota has approved. And Toyota has stopped doing new models, so there could be some kind of a dullness in the marketplace. Why won't you build your own car? Why won't you find an investor? So Honda wrote 1,500 letters to potential investors. And, uh, and by the way, Japanese is a roundabout language. You don't say things directly. If you want to tell someone, I love you, you first say, the moon is beautiful. It's a roundabout thing. You know? He wrote the 1,500 letters. 
sends it off to these potential investors, gets one of them, starts building the factory. As it was being built, it was damaged twice by bombs. He repaired and continued to go on. And when the factory was about to be opened, it was completely destroyed by an earthquake. Ouch. Okay. Eight years of trying, and this is what happens to me. But he never gave up. Do I want to build my own car? Yes. Can I build my own car? Yes. And with that, he continuously walked like a madman with this mantra in his head. And one day he was walking past a garage and he sees there a bicycle and next to the bicycle there is a motor. He says, bicycle, motor, motor, bicycle. So if I fix a motor on the bicycle, I'll have a motorcycle. And then he goes and buys a bicycle and a motor, puts it together and goes around. People said, Honda, that's a great idea. Everyone in Japan can use one of these things. So market testing was positive and he goes, builds a smaller factory in the debris and starts selling motorcycles. So in the sundown of a dream, because he, he believed in his purpose, he believed in his ability and passion, he was able to get there and build the kind, you know the rest of the story, the rest is history. So the three foundation tools are very powerful, act the way you want to feel, pink elephant, and questions are the answers. Another important area, another simple tool is the transformational vocabulary. We keep using negative words all the time. And if you learn to transform them into positive words, we will build new dendrites. So let's try a few of them. Confused. What do you think a more positive way of saying I'm confused? I have clarity. Any options? There are options. I have, I, have, I have clarity or I need clarity. So rather than saying I'm confused, I'm looking for clarity. So if you keep saying that, because if you say confused, the brain will say, yes, you are confused. Let me make it real for you. <laughs> Let me make it a little more confusing for you. Lost would be what? Still searching. Failure. A feedback, a learning. Someone said, you know, by that definition, I must be the most successful person in this room. <laughs> because failure is a pillar of success. I'm a very successful person. Mistake. Again, similar learning. Weakness, an area for improvement. An area for improvement. Stressed. Anyone? Try blessed with responsibility. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> you get stressed when you have too much responsibility. Lonely. Anyone here who has been lonely in your life? Accepting me. Anyone? Okay. Next time you're lonely, just say I'm available. <laughs> now don't take it too literally, please. <laughs> I'm not saying when your loved one goes away for her holidays for two weeks, that you're going to go out and say I'm available, take me. I'm not talking about that. I'm only saying... <laughs> I'm only saying I'm available to spend more time with my parents. I'm available to catch up with some of my school friends. I'm available to myself to go take that meditation course. Yes, I'm available. <laughs> All right. There's loads of things we are available. Sick, this is physically sick. Okay. Try cleansing. I'm not sick, I'm just cleansing. Okay. Um, uh, because if you say sick, yes, you think about sickness all the time and it's all negativity. If I'm saying I'm cleansing, I'm actually working towards cleansing myself up. Problem, challenge, opportunity, overloaded, blessed, okay. <laughs> try over-demanded. Okay. I'm not overloaded, I'm just over-demanded. And it's a quick change in word. But if you keep saying I'm overloaded, you're telling yourself, no, I can't do much. Uh, that's my capacity. Over-demanded brings my value up. Okay. So these are some of the simple foundation tools we have in NLP. There's loads more, but let me tell you things you can do. Uh, once you master this, you can convert stress into success. There's loads of tools of stress into success. Uh, managing your time, finding a purpose, writing your own life mission statement and becoming purposeful, giving up bad habits, uh, erasing negative uh, emotions of uh, past memories, 
overcoming phobias, motivating yourself, building relationships, and there's loads and loads of them. Let me finish off, because I talked about blessed with responsibility with one of my favorite poems, which brings out this very important aspect. The name of the poem is, Forgive Me When I Whine. Today upon a bus, I saw a girl with golden hair and wished I was as fair. When suddenly she rose to leave, she hobbled down the aisle. She had one leg and wore a crutch, but as she passed, she passed a smile. Oh God, forgive me when I whine, I have two legs, the world is mine. Later I stopped to buy some candy, and the lad who sold it had such charm. I stopped a bit and spoke with him, if I were late, I'll do no harm. But as I left, he said to me, I thank you, sir. You've been so kind. It's nice to talk with folks like you. You see, he said, I'm blind. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two eyes. The world is mine. Later, as I walked down the street, I saw a child with eyes of blue. He stood and watched the others play. He did not know what to do. I stopped a bit and then I asked, why won't you join the others, dear? He looked ahead without a word. And then I knew he couldn't hear. Oh God, forgive me when I whine, I've got two years, the world is mine. With feet to take me where I'd go, with eyes to see the sunset glow, with ears to hear what I'd know. Oh God, forgive me when I whine, I've been blessed indeed, the world is mine. Thank you.